My father won the real war. He killed Prince Rhaegar. He took the crown while you hid on a costly rock. Yo, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be discussing Rob Stark and Grey Wind, two of the coolest characters in the story. There are four theories about them. One is definitely true, one's definitely not true, two were open to interpretation, one of which we're going to find out whether it's true or not in the Winds of Winter. So the four theories are that, first off, Rob Stark is a warg, that one's true. The second theory is that Rob Stark lived a second life inside Grey Wind. That one's open to interpretation, personally, I believe there's very solid evidence that it's true, we'll get into that in the video. The third theory is that Grey Wind is still alive, and if you believe the second theory, that would mean that Rob Stark lives on. Unfortunately, that one's not true, but I am going to go over that theory because you should know it. And the fourth theory is that Rob Stark does live on in a way. Rob Stark's head is currently on the mountain, and the mountain is now named Sir Robert Strong. Is it true what they say about him? I don't know. What do they say about him? That they can turn into a wolf at night. Okay, first let's talk about Rob being a warg. Here are four quick clues. Actually, no, let's do five. The fifth one's pretty important. I'll do that today. So the first one's just that the wolves are all howling when Bran fell, right? Looking back in hindsight, the wolves howling is actually a reflection of Rob Stark's pain. Follows me around all day, clutching my leg, crying. Close the windows, I can't stand it. Please make them stop. But that's not actually a clue. It's too vague, right? Number two is that when Tyrion comes back from the wall and Rob Stark believes Tyrion's behind the assassination attempt, Tyrion goes up to Rob Stark, who's sitting with a sword across his lap, which means he's denying him guest right. Pretty vicious, right? And then Grey Wind and Summer both start prowling in from either side of Tyrion, growling at him. Their growls are possibly a reflection of Bran's anger and Rob Stark's anger. Don't like being called boy. Insulted. And it gets better. Number three. So Sir Cleos Frey is delivering the peace and parley terms to Rob Stark, right? And Rob gives back his own terms. He knows that they're not going to be accepted and he's all proud of his little terms. Right at the perfect timing, Grey Wind comes up and growls at Sir Cleos Frey. Lady Cat actually looks at Rob later on and she's like, why did you do that? That was pretty immature. But the fact that the wolf prowled forward and started growling right at the perfect time, right after he delivered his terms, it's clearly a sign that Rob's connected to that wolf, to Grey Wind. And then all Rob's men were like, Stark, Stark, King of the North, right in front of Sir Cleo's fray. And Grey Wind was like, oh, which I guess you could just say is a wolf getting excited with people cheering. But in hindsight, see, there are better clues coming up. In hindsight, that's Rob. Rob's just having his little victory dance because he had Grey Wind growl. He gave those terms, had Grey Wind growl. Oh. <laughs> Rob, the young wolf. Here's one that I forgot last night. What is Rob Stark's angriest moment? I saw Harry and die on the battlefield and Torrin was strangled by the Kingslayer. They were his kids. They were boys! It's when Rickard Karstark killed the boys, right? So Grey Wind's not even with them. He's half a castle away, and Catelyn can hear Grey Wind howling. It's a great line. Through stone walls and wooden doors, through night and rain, he still knows the scent of death and ruin. So Catelyn thinks he can smell it because he's a dire wolf, but no. Grey Wind is pissed because Rob Stark is pissed. That's a big clue. And here's where it gets interesting. Grey Wind actually gets angry at Lady Cat twice because Rob is mad at Lady Cat. The first time is when she actually mocks him like, ooh, are you afraid to have Jamie back on the battlefield? And George R. R. Martin specifically wrote, Grey Wind growled, comma, as if he sensed Rob's anger. So Grey Wind growled at Lady Cat because Rob was like, oh, mom. <laughs> and a very similar scene actually happens a book later. So Rob Stark is talking to Lady Cat about potentially signing off that Jon Snow is the heir to Winterfell, because at this point, he thinks Bran and Rickon are dead. Lady Cat doesn't want that. She knows about history, about family, like Aegon IV legalizing all his bastards. And in Lady Cat's defense, Theon betrayed Rob Stark. But here's where she makes a mistake. She looks at Rob, and she compares Jon Snow to Theon. Keep in mind, Rob, like, Rob liked Theon, but Rob loved Jon. They were boys, they were brothers. So Rob Stark's like, Jon Snow would never hurt a son of mine. And Lady Cat responds, just like Theon Greyjoy would never harm Bran and Rickon. And the very next line is that Grey Wind jumps up on King Christopher's crypt, his teeth bared. And Rob's face was cold. So clearly, Rob and Grey Wind, they have a partial soul swap. Part of Grey Wind is Rob and part of Rob is Grey Wind. And there's actually the next one. This is the best one of all. It's a military strategy. So when they came down from the north, there's a huge river, the Green Fork. That's what the twins crosses, right? 
So Rob had Roose Bolton go down on the east side of it as sort of a just a distraction force, and that's where Tywin Lannister met up with him. Meanwhile, Rob crossed at the twins and then went down on the west side of the Green Fork to go down and get to River Run. He then captured Jamie and came up with his next plan, right? So Tywin's over battling Roose over east of the Green Fork. Rob's now west of the Green Fork over at River Run. Tywin Lannister's brother-in-law, who's also his cousin, because if you didn't know, Tywin Lannister married his cousin. So Stafford Lannister's over in the west, raising up a second army for Tywin, and Rob can't have that. He can't be attacked from two sides. He would have lost the war if they were able to do that. The only reason Rob was able to show up at Oxcross and defeat them is because he was able to surprise them. Why? Because there's a place in between Oxcross and where Rob was at River Run, a place called the Golden Tooth. Rob led his entire army, single file, through a goat track that Grey went and sniffed out. The only way you're going to do that and jeopardize getting attacked is if you're pretty confident in the plan. And the only way you'd be confident in the plan is if you saw through Grey Wind's eyes. You saw that goat track and you knew that you could get past the Golden Tooth without getting spotted. So they were able to sneak up to Ox Cross and surprise Stafford Lannister and the new forces he was raising there. They cut the horse lines. Grey Wind scared the horses. The horses panicked. The men are really new. They're untrained or they're being trained. So they all panicked. And Grey Wind killed six or seven men. But the point is, you don't lead your army single file past the Golden Tooth on a goat track unless you're really confident as to where it goes. So Rob Stark is a war, which leads into point two. Did Rob Stark live a second life inside Grey Wind? And I believe so. There's actually really good evidence that he did. So the second life concept, that's not just something that crazy Kev from Bridge Ford, his crazy theories is making up. Second life is part of the story. A rel of the second life inside his eagle. Faramir in his rolling third person limited chapter lived the second life inside his wolf one eye. And Melisandre had a vision of Jon Snow. Now a man, now a wolf, now a man again. Which basically implies that Jon Snow is currently living a second life inside Ghost. And what was Jon Snow's last word before he died? Ghost. Jon Snow didn't technically die. He's living a second life for now inside Ghost. Presumably. But yeah, he is. Rob Stark. What was Rob Stark's very last word before he died? Hmm, it's two words. Grey Wind. So Rob Stark lived a second life inside Grey Wind. So now we get to the third theory that Grey Wind is still alive. So they cut Rob Stark's head off and they put a wolf's head on top of it. Some people don't believe that that was Grey Wind's head. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. There's a quote from Jon Snow chapter in A Dance with Dragons. Jon's thinking to himself how there used to be six, but now, quote, four remained and one the White Wolf could not sense. So some people interpret that as there being four that he could sense and one more that he could not sense. There were six total, ladies dead, so that would imply that Grey Wind's still alive, but that's not what he's saying there. So the wall is magical. When Jon Snow is south of the wall and Ghost is north of the wall, Jon Snow cannot sense Ghost. At this point in the story, Bran's gone north of the wall, so Summer is north of the wall. So that's the one wolf that he cannot sense. It's Summer. But four remained. Ghost, Summer, Nymeria, Shaggy Dog. And one he could not sense. Summer. Granted, I get it. That line is open to interpretation. Some people read that line differently. But it's worth noting that Jon Snow actually thinks to himself that Ghost knows that Grey Wind is dead. And on top of that, so the Red Wedding happens and Rob Stark dies and Grey Wind dies. Presumably. The very first Bran chapter, after the Red Wedding, the very first words in that chapter are Bran realizing that Grey Wind has died. Now the very first Jon Snow chapter after the Red Wedding, Jon's sort of busy setting up and then having the initial battle at the wall. So he's busy. But the second Jon Snow chapter after the Red Wedding, the very first words are Jon Snow thinking about Grey Wind's death. He actually thinks that it might be summer because it's a Grey Wolf, but no, it's Grey Wind. So Grey Wind's dead, but Rob Stark is a warg. It's implied that he lived a second life inside Grey Wind, unfortunately, not for very long. However, then you've got the Robert Strong theory. Rob Stark was beheaded. They put that direwolf head on his body, but what do you do with the king's head? You bring it to Tywin Lannister. It's never explicitly stated that he ever received it down in King's Landing, but Tywin was going to want to see that head, right? And actually, there's the meeting with Joffrey, where Tywin sort of disciplines Joffrey. Joffrey gets all mad, and Tywin's like, Okay, why don't you give him some moon tea? He seems like he's tired. <laughs> the king is tired. See him to his chambers. Come along. I'm not tired. Yeah. But in that meeting, Joffrey actually called for Rob Stark's head. So presumably, they got Rob Stark's head at some point. Right back to Lord Frey. 
thank him for his service and command him to send Rob Stark's head. Then you have to layer in the fact that Doran Martell wanted the mountain's head. Supposedly, Kyburn cut off the mountain's head and he cleaned it up. It's all bones, so you don't know who it is, but he sent that head down to Dorne, and they noted that it's a huge head. So some fans are thinking, maybe Kyburn didn't cut off the mountain's head, because some people came with dwarf's heads trying to say that they captured Tyrion, even though Cersei knew it wasn't Tyrion. But maybe Kyburn actually just sent a huge dwarf's head down to Dorne, and the mountain still has his own head. Oh, could be. But let's be real. George R. R. Martin is twisted. You guys know this. So would you really be surprised if at some point in the winds of winter or a dream for spring, the mountain removes his helm, especially if he's fighting like Arya, and he removes his helm, and it's Rob Stark. Obviously, to counter that, to play devil's advocate, it sort of takes away from Clegane Bowl if he doesn't have his own head, if he's got Rob Stark's head. But if I had to put my money down on it today, I say that the mountain has Rob Stark's head. So he did live on. He's living a third life. <laughs> Yay, Rob. All right, I'll talk to you.